We're in the city of La Jolla out at the Birch Aquarium and I'm here with Danny. Danny, first of all, tell us a little bit about Birch Aquarium. Sure, so Birch Aquarium is nestled nicely above the ocean here on the Scripps and UCSD campus. So we have a wonderful view and we've got lots of great animals here to see here. So give us a little snapshot of what's here at the aquarium. So at the aquarium, we're kind of unique in that we're divided in kind of two sections. We have a fish side, like we like to call it. So you can kind of take a journey along the Pacific coast. So from kind of cold waters to warm waters, so tropical fish, um, cold water fish, invertebrates, lots of things that just live in the ocean. So you can kind of take this neat pathway. And then the other side is the museum side. So there is more kind of um, traditional museum exhibits, but on really neat topics. So climate change is one of our exhibits that we have right now. There's also a coral area talking about kind of ocean acidification. And then we've got beautiful seahorses. I'm listening to you, <laughs> but I'm distracted by, is that a shark? It's overwhelming. That's a, that's a local, that's a leopard shark. They're found really? right here in our waters. Yeah, you can just right off the coast here, just a few steps onto the beach, you can see these leopard sharks in like knee high water during the summer. It's absolutely incredible and transformative an experience. I'm looking at the, those big, huge fish over there. We have a yeah. lot of people in front of the aquarium. What's in there? So the reason everyone's over there is there is a turtle in there, a loggerhead turtle. And she has a wonderful oh, yeah. story to tell. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, we'll go ahead and tell it. So this loggerhead turtle was actually rescued. Um, she was found uh, in New Jersey. Um, and she wasn't able to swim very well. So she was rehabilitated and unfortunately an animal like that can't always survive in the wild once they've been rehabilitated. So we actually brought her here to care for her and she's a great animal ambassador to tell her story about how human beings and animals, how we can help each other to protect our natural environments, our ecosystems and, and work together um, to create a better planet essentially. Whoa, what is this an eel oh, right here? Yeah, yeah, more eels. Let's check out those crazy eyes. They don't have really good eyesight, but they have incredible smell. Wow. So he's probably smelling me, right? No, no. This, this acrylic is really thick. Oh, wow. It, yeah, actually, there's a, a sample right behind us there. They can see how thick it is. Oh my yeah, goodness. Yeah, so this is holding back lots of water right now. <laughs> that is, that's ginormous. It's huge. At 70,000 gallons of water that is holding back. Okay, what's this? Oh, so this is a, a nice way, a bathymetric map of um, the La Jolla area. Okay. So on here you can see where Scripps is located and that we have all these amazing canyons running throughout the space. And what's really neat about that is we get some cool larger critters that can move through here. So in the summer we get like white sharks, um, we get gray whales in the winter. Danny, what's in this tank right here? So this is research in action, believe it or not. So there's research going on here. Um, what's really neat about this tank is it is a replica of like a coral reef. So tropical water. And what you look at, if you look at the bottom here, you're going to see this tool. And that is a tool for helping measuring the health of a reef system. So we work with scientists, our exhibits folks, our aquarists work together to create this exhibit that's focused on conservation of coral species. Um, corals um, are kind of in a weird state right now. Some are dying, some are not in response to lots of environmental changes. Mm -hmm. So the idea is what if we can create a space, an exhibit that kind of tells that story. How are scientists studying those changes in coral population? Oh my goodness. And what else do we have? There's a really here? hard to find file fish. They look just like algae and they kind of swim in a weird way too, so their behaviors and their color are built for disappearing into algae systems or in coral. <laughs> it's normal, right? He's actually back there, he's right back here. You can barely see him underneath the algae. Oh yeah. Um, but he looks just like it. Wow. So the that animal kingdom is amazing. Camouflage. There's so much you don't even, we don't even know out there sometimes. Oh my, oh what in the world? Ooh, what is this? Yeah, so. It's like a clownfish, like from exactly that right. famous Disney movie. Yeah, uh, they found yeah. somebody, they found I think. Some, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. anemone fish hiding in here, so great protection, lives in an enemy, they're able to, to not get stung by the nematocyst, so a stinging cell. So it's a great oh relationship. Is this fish? <laughs> Here's another famous fish, a oh. regal blue tang. Um, they were searching for her in another. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly yeah, yeah. right. But these yeah. are mostly living corals too, so the lighting is different in this tank. That's one of the dead giveaways. Okay. Is they need let natural light because they're photosynthetic inside. So this is a, oh, a, yeah. an organism, it's a living animal that has sort of like a plant-like organism inside it, and they give energy to each other. Um, wow. So that's why the light is different than this one. That's why it's so vibrant and brilliant. So we're now on the museum side. <laughs> Are you sure we're in, not on a boat in the middle of the ocean? It's exactly what it's supposed to feel like. Yes, exactly. So this is Expedition at Sea. Wow. Which is meant to immerse you in kind of an exploration boat experience. It's working. Good. Are you seasick yet? Uh, not yet. <laughs> the idea is that between sound and the visuals um, and the activities we have here is meant to give you the idea that you're on a boat and that this is what a researcher might experience when they're out doing research at sea versus on land. 
I'm here with Leslie inside the Seahorse exhibit. Tell us a little bit about the exhibit. This exhibit is called There's Something About Seahorses and we want people to understand uh, what a seahorse is. It's quite a unique animal. It's a fish, but it doesn't really look like a fish. So we want people to come in and find out what a seahorse <laughs> really is. And I think mo many people are very intrigued by seahorses. So What sizes are seahorses? So the largest seahorse is going to be about maximum 13 inches in length when their tails are totally uncurled. So they're not as big as most people envision them to be when they see them in cartoons or <laughs> pictures. They think that, you know, Atlantis can ride on a seahorse. Well, that's not true. They don't get that big. <laughs> I was hoping. Yeah. All right. But we do have um, all different sizes of seahorses here from about one inch to about wow. 10 inches. So we wow. have quite a variety in size. Well, what's the most, uh, you know, out in the ocean, mm -hmm. uh, what, is there an average size of a seahorse? Typically, they would be about four to six inches in total length. Okay. Um, that's the average, but they do, they do vary depending on what species of seahorse. How many different species of seahorse are we talking about? Uh, throughout the world, there's about 35 different species of seahorse. Quite a variety. All right, so the ones that are right behind us here, yes. I'm seeing like different colors in this tank. Mm -hmm. Are those two different species or the same same species, just different color? They are all the same species. Um, one thing that's really cool about seahorses is that they can change their coloration because they use camouflage um, to defend themselves from predators. They can change their colors to blend in with their background and they can change from yellow to orange to red to uh, beige, brown, and black. And they hold very still by anchoring with their prehensile tail. They can be very active when um, they're hungry. Oh. And, <laughs> and then they see people sometimes and they associate us with food. And so they're very active swimmers. So you can see that they swim back and forth. They use their fins to swim. So they have a, a, a fin oh, yeah. on their back called a dorsal fin and two fins on either side of their heads called pectoral fins. And they use those fins to swim up and down and then they also use the ones on the side of their heads to kind of maneuver right or left. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looks like you have different seahorses in each one of these tanks here. We do, we do. We just want to represent different habitats that seahorses live in. Are, are these different um, species as the, the other ones we saw? Yes, this is a different species. This like is a, spikes on them yeah, almost. Yeah, they're um, called barber seahorse and oh. they're found in the Indo-Pacific. And they are a little more spiky than some of the other seahorses that we previously saw. And they also have stripes around their snouts, which is oh, kind of wow. pretty. <laughs> And there's also another species in here um, that has rings around the tail. So this one right there, the darker one yeah, right there. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, that's oh called gosh. the tiger tail seahorse. What are these right here? So these are weedy sea dragons, and they wow. are found in southern Australia um, on the opposite end from the Great Barrier Reef. Because when you talk about Australia, everybody automatically thinks they're, <laughs> they're from the Great Barrier Reef because they're really exotic looking. but. They are from the southern end of Australia where there's a lot of seaweed growth. And that's why they look like the way they do because they, are blend, they blend in using camouflage with all of their appendages with the seaweed. So they're very closely related to seahorses, but they are a different type of signaphid, which is considered a seahorse, a pipefish, and a sea dragon. So um, they're very close relatives. Um, and they, you can see they have a similar snout, although it's a little more elongated. Yeah, it's really long, yeah. yeah. Um, but they don't have a prehensile tail, so that's oh, something that's so they different. can't grab onto mm -hmm. anything in the water. In yes, in the water there. Yeah, wow. and they just kind of drift back and forth with the current, so that they look like a piece of algae. So today we are going to feed some uh, live mysa shrimp. In All right, cool. Meat. Let's okay. do it. Okay. Wow, little shrimp, huh? Yeah, little these are shrimp. tiny little mysa shrimp, and they're live right now. So. Now, will they, they eat all that shrimp? They will eat all that shrimp. That is so fascinating. Yes, oh my gosh, is. there's so much to see here. Thank you so much. Oh, you're I welcome. Appreciate you're it. Welcome. All right, I'm gonna go check out the rest out here at the Birch Aquarium in La Jolla. Ooh.